what's up beautiful people it's your boy judio and i'm back again with a new video so today we're going to be checking out a video that some of you might not appreciate some of you might appreciate but i'm not sure what to expect going into this one so i'm going to keep a, a very objective reasoning and an open mind the title of this video is neo degrassi tyson's am i calling it correctly neo degrassi tyson so the title is neo degrassi tyson's thoughts on trans genderism that's the title i'm ready if youtube let it stay then i don't think it's that controversial because if it was youtube would probably block it or give the channel a strike but if they let it stay then it means we can watch it i'm ready without wasting your time let's get to it the left is militating against the the advent of science one of those areas is is the area of transgenderism uh the the argument that is typically made by gender theorists is that Gender is entirely separate from sex. Uh, you, you've seen the argument made that it makes no difference on average if men are stronger than women are, and that if we were to allow transgender women to compete with non-transgender women, then this would somehow not disadvantage biological women. And this seems to me absolutely ascientific, that if we're actually gonna have a discussion about gender and sex, that that should be based in data, which suggests that mammals are in fact binary in terms of their sex, unless you have intersex birth defects, typically, or genetic defects. I'm happy to opine on this. Um, this only- I like to see both of them together. I just, I just must put that out there. I like both of them together. Because one thing I like about this man, he, he knows how to disagree logically. You know, he's going to tell you he doesn't disagree or he doesn't agree. And then he's going to tell you his reasons in the best tone possible with very composed, you know? Only matters because today we segregate most, nearly all sports by gender. Otherwise, why do we even give a shit? <laughs> <laughs> What's what someone identifies with? So this is, we live in a free country and with consenting adults and people free expression of who and what they are. Man, an adult level, I agree with you. I, I think it, it does matter what you teach children. That's what I'm children. saying. And, and so there's the, there's the, the, the matrix of, of, you know, what you are biologically, how you express yourself, who you choose as a sexual partner. If we actually live in a free country, as we tell ourselves, people's freedom to behave in any of those ways should not concern you at all nor are they requiring that you behave that way. Okay, well, this is for their well, own freedom, because we live in a free sides. country. Now, what is unresolved here is- He can't wait to talk, he's so ready. <laughs> he's so ready. Is what do you do with sports? It's unresolved. And I've followed that closely and I don't see any, I don't see any meaningful solutions to come down off of that. Um, we know that hormones, manifest differently in different people and have just the whole thing with steroids steroids are hormones right and we rallied against steroids in professional sports because it gives you an undue advantage so i and i've tried to think of what the future of sports would be in the world of a gender spectrum and it may be you don't specify whether it's a male or female sport you just take measurements of what your hormonal balances are and so you compete based on your own. I mean, this is thought I had. I, mean, yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know where it's going to land. It, but the WNBA won't be in business. If that's measurable, maybe. And it's for very long, <laughs> if, that's, if that's the case. It would just be, uh, you'd, have to, you'd have to find some way to compete people against each other if you still care that sports is an interesting activity. I guess the, the area where it does come up in, in a non-sports Area. Yeah, tell me, now, it, I don't know. So what? it would be, you, you talk in your book about the education of children and teaching children about science. And right yes. now, children are being taught about the quote-unquote gender spectrum, which is not scientifically based. That is a, that is a theory-based idea. No, no, wait, wait, that, wait, wait, hold on. People express themselves on a spectrum. So you learn that. That's, I, I, I don't, that's, it, that, that, that's, a, that's a social, that's yeah, a social sure. point, it, not a scientific point. It's, it's. Who? Meaning we, we express ourselves wait, wait, hold on, hold on. In, based in different languages. Is that something you teach in science class or is that something that you teach when you're teaching language? Um, so whether the fact that people want to express themselves on a spectrum 
on a gender spectrum, whether that fact is something you want to put in a sociology class, oh, class. or in a science class, maybe that remains to be determined. But it is a real fact about real society. Well, of course, nobody's denying that people identify how they want to identify. So, so, so the question I, is, what I, is the relationship of that to biology? Meaning that I, what, the argument is made that trans women are women, for example. And what that seems to mean is that trans women are identical to women. Now, if people want to say trans women are not biological women, obviously that is the case. But people don't seem to want to say that. Although that is obviously scientifically true. Trans women are not biological women. Biological women are biological women. But where are you going with this? What? <laughs> yeah, let him land. That's, I'm trying to see where he's going with it. Yeah, don't stop him. I just want to see where he's going because I, I want to... He's, he's, he's packed and ready to say something, you know, so I want him to land and then from his points, then he can be questioned. What, what is your... What is your... What are you trying to accomplish mm -hmm. by s asking yourself... Is it science or is it not science? It's how it's but, people in society. But, th th but this is this is a perfect example of an area where suddenly it doesn't matter to say things that are just true. Like why is it why is it bad or wrong? To uh, point let me, out? Let me, I have another way to to approach this. Um, I care what is objectively true in the world as a scientist. Um, but let me not say even as a scientist. I just simply care what is objectively true, and science happens to be a pretty potent path to invoke, to find out what is true. And so if people express themselves on a gender spectrum, and that is an actual thing in an actual society, if we have not fully explained that scientifically, that's an interesting frontier to study. If you want to say it's only sociological, then it's the purview of the social sciences. I don't care who studies it. It's an interesting fact about society that's worth learning about. If to, to make it, to fight someone and say, it's not biological, it's just your this, it's, it's real and it's there. Well, because it's real because it manifests. But it, it, it is real because ma it manifests, but the, the question of, the, of how to classify manifestation is a scientific question, meaning that, for example, there was a, there was a, a woman over at Brown University. Mm -hmm. She came out with a study that suggested that there was a phenomenon called rapid onset gender dysphoria in which a member of a particular group would suffer from gender dysphoria and this person's immediate peer group would suddenly have an onset of gender dysphoria. This paper was so controversial that Brown tried to pull it and then was, was forced to re reassign it later. You see this sort of That's treatment That's a different question. What you're asking now is... Are there some topics that should not be studied scientifically? Right. And uh, is there some taboo? I'm Sam Harris. I think he's getting to the same point because I did some topics that should not be studied scientifically, but sociologically, I think. But then on the other side, Ben is asking, why does it matter whether it's science or sociological? So this is a very interesting one. I don't know so much. I need to educate myself on the on the gender spectrum they're speaking about. I don't really know so much about it. So I'm kind of like floating a little bit right now. <laughs> speaks a lot about this. Yes. And um, I think the concern is if you study some topic that's a hot button topic and you bring scientific methods and tools to it, there we don't trust, I'm, I'm interpreting here, I think we as a society don't trust that people in charge in a free country won't try to legislate something that will constrict people's freedoms in the face of that information. I think that's the fear. Well, isn't that... It's a fear. I mean, and isn't that... We don't trust our own ability to govern ourselves in the face of what could be some information relative to other, well, other kinds of information. Isn't that a bit of a problem? Yes. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not, it means it's not a free society. It's not a society of free inquiry, which I think you need, ultimately. I think this was supposed to be an interview, but it seems more like a discussion, you know, like a back and forth. I really wanted to hear him express everything in totality, and then from his, his points, he can be questioned. You know, I like, I like to act that way. I'd rather just listen to all you have to say, and then from your points, I break it down if you're not able to 
you know, fully convince us from the points you made, then I can choose a stand, you know. So I wanted him to really speak. But, um, yeah. My general take on all of this stuff, mm -hmm. from climate change to gender dysphoria to all these issues, is bring out the science and then let's hash it out. I think that the problem I'm seeing yeah, in a lot the of sides is... What is your motivation? What, why? Right? Why does that matter? It matters because if you have political power, you could end up creating legislation that subtracts freedoms from people who previously were enjoying the same freedoms as you. The history of that exercise then make a better argument. doesn't end well. Now, well, but the, the, the history of which exercise? Bring out all the science and let's hash it out? I'm saying if you bring out all the science and the politicians hash it out, the history of that exercise is a recipe for disaster if it involves discoveries that put people's freedom as defined in our constitution at risk. But, but another argument here is, even at this point, is everybody really free on the same level? Do you think everybody's really free on the same level? Do the poor and the rich and the, you know, the privileged, you know, just different classes, do you think we're all free on the same level? I don't think so. So when you speak about freedom, already there's no like real clear freedom to start with. <laughs> yeah, there's no real clear freedom already. Now you're arguing for limitations on, on areas of particular study. No, I'm arguing on we need a way to shield, we need a way to protect people's freedoms in the face of whatever gets discovered scientifically. So I, I, asked, I, I'll give you, I'll give I mean, you, I agree. I, I think that's what the Constitution is for, is to, is to guard rights from... But the, we're always I mean, fighting why, the constant People who want rights are always fighting others who are saying they don't get the rights from the Constitution. This is a daily challenge on the progressive left. It is a daily challenge, right? Here's an example. I was, I, I forgot how I ended up getting this phone call. It was some magazine that serves the gay community. And they want, oh, I don't remember why, because they wanted my opinion on, um, there was some they wanted my opinion about whether being gay was biological or mental. Right, there's or, that new study that came out, this vast uh, study. Or psychological. Of, right, okay? right, right. And I said, I don't care <laughs> which it is. It, it, find out what it is, <laughs> fine. But the answer to that question should have no consequence on legislations or laws yeah like the first thought like if someone asks me that i'm just gonna ask why are you asking what is the implication of the answer to that question you know because usually that con that as that question comes from from how do i call it from a judgmental mindset before you speak in that manner it's like you're trying to ascertain this thing so you can do this you know so I would ask the implications before even trying to answer that. But at this point, I don't think it's a, it's a topic we need to like, we're in 2022, we don't have to keep pounding on that topic anymore. <laughs> yeah, like everybody just leave and breathe, right? Because for example, suppose, it's, suppose it said it's purely biological, okay? Then you say, oh, that explains it. Then suppose it says it's purely psychological. What are you going to do now? You say, well, now you can, you're going to go to the, 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 the reorientation camps or whatever those are called, where they realign you because they say it's psychological rather than biological. All of a sudden, people start behaving in ways in society that want to constrict the freedom of expression of who and what people are. And that is a danger. Mm -hmm. So maybe there needs to be a line in the sand. Let science do what it does, but politicians keep us free. <laughs> Yet there's so many politicians that are doing the opposite of that. So why aren't you a libertarian? I mean, <laughs> like, me. oh. I'm a libertarian. Come over here. Just okay. The, the, the oh. line is right oh. here. I'm just join me over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they both made interesting points. So I think Neil deGrasse is interested in creating the real, like, should I say, establishing if it's scientific or sociological, just so you know, just so people understand how to process it or how to to accept the information, you know, just to, he wants to categorize it so people understand how to accept it. But then on Ben's um, part, I think, I think it's Ben Shapiro, yeah? Let me just verify the name again. Oh, I don't, I don't know his name here. <laughs> I was calling him Ben, but the picture here says somebody different. But yeah, on the other man's part, 
um, he's trying to say why does that information matter because he's seeing it as a as if this if this information is being let out it could cause um, a situation where people's freedom are being taken away from them so he's trying to say why does it matter it shouldn't let everybody be treated as as free as you know as one regardless so yeah there's logical reasoning to both points that's why i really wanted one person to express themselves to a point where we can actually you know get in depth in depth with your points and question them <laughs> yeah i mean that's how I, that's how i like to think i just like when people talk 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 when you when you talk you get it gets to a certain point where you your intentions all come out and then from there we can take your words and you know break it down but anyways that was a good video i appreciate both of them for having that interview and this was posted by ben shapiro yeah this man the black man i know him but i'm not I don't know his name. I don't know if it's Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro also feels like a familiar name to me. Anyways, let me know what you guys think of. Maybe he's Neil deGrasse and the man on the other side is Ben Shapiro. I got it all wrong. <laughs> let me know what you guys think. Please feel free to correct me on all these glitches I've been blabbing and doing. Yo, if you have any points to share, please talk to me in the comment section as well. Let's have a discussion. And I think we should bring more videos on this just so we can keep educating ourselves and learning some more. Anyways, have a wonderful day. Peace.